Alright. Get audio. Okay, let's check the next part of the Archon Quest. Uh, Co-case commission to go to the Sumerian Adventures Guild and talk to Catherine. You arrive at the Adventures Guild in Sumerian, Catherine seems you have a very tricky commission for your docket. So, let's go. Mm. Okay. Perfect! It's you two! I have a commission here that has your names written all over it. In fact, I'd even go so far as to say you're the only ones for the job. I usually am. The only ones for the job? Huh. If our help is really that important, it's probably some Archon class oh. commission, right? I never heard of this classification before, but sure we're happy to take this all on which Archon you need us to deal with today. <laughs> The Adventurous Guild doesn't employ that kind of classification system. In fact, this commission is also probably not nearly as intimidating as what you're expecting. All it asks us to do is to find a missing person. That's what we posted here a huh? time ago. Then why did you say we were the only ones for the job? I came across this commission while reviewing our backlog not too long ago. It seems simple. But our records indicate that over a dozen successive efforts to complete it have all ended in failure, despite attempts by several accomplished and renowned adventurers. With the reputation of the Adventurers Guild and the performance of the Sumeru branch at stake, it's in our best interest to assign this commission to the adventurer with the highest completion rate over the past few years. Well, that's us for sure! Pleasure to get you everywhere with Paimon, but I can't guarantee we will be able to complete it either. <laughs> All I'm asking is for you to give it your best shot. If it proves to be beyond your capabilities as well, I'll talk to the commissioner about canceling the commission. Okay, so who are we looking for? And what is it about this commission that's made it so hard to complete? This commission was jointly issued by the residents of Vimara Village. They say one of their own villagers has gone missing. But the problem is, they don't know the missing person's name. Hmm? They can only provide information about his general appearance. Uh, they're all from the same village, but they don't even know his name? Hmm. If so many adventurers have failed to complete this commission, maybe this missing villager doesn't exist at all. Could it be some sort of a prank or something? Unlikely. Several villagers came by to issue the commission, and judging by their appearance and tone of voice, they seemed incredibly sincere. It certainly didn't seem like a joke to them. Besides, putting up a commission requires a processing fee. There aren't many upsides to a prank that costs Mora to carry out. True, that would be a little strange. In any case, it would probably be best to go to Vimara Village and ask around first. The Adventurers Guild does have some information on hand, but I would say anything you can learn directly from the villagers would be far more reliable. The best way to avoid misdirection is to go to the source. Alright then, let's go! Paimon's I'm starting to get really curious about this whole thing. Okay, story. Add Astra. Anything? No. Okay, so let's. <laughs> Get there. Nobody is close enough to the person to even know their name. How would the person be relevant enough for them to realize? We made it to Vamara Village! Why don't we talk to some of the villagers to learn a little bit more about the missing guy? If this commission is really as challenging as Catherine made it out to be, we're gonna need to carry out a very detailed investigation. Hello there. You 
looking to buy something? I do business in this area. Oh, no, no. We're adventurers. Catherine sent us to look into a commission here in Vermara Village. Ah, so you're here about that, then. Ah, you're not the first, that's for sure. We've certainly made a lot of trouble for you all. To be honest, we aren't holding out much hope. Many adventurers have made their way out here, confident they'd be able to help us, only to leave soon after with nothing to show for their efforts. We've pretty much had it up to here in questions, and the area around the village has practically been overturned in search of clues, but no one has been able to make any headway. So, this person we're looking for, what's his name? Where did he live? Does he have any relatives? Uh, I, I don't know. I really have no clue. I couldn't tell you. Okay, guess you are really sick of answering questions. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound short with you. I was actually just giving you my answer to your questions. So those three questions are no go then? Is there anything else you can tell us? I know it may seem like we don't have anything to offer by way of information, but I promise you, we all have a very strong impression of him. When you live in the same village as someone, you develop a lot of memories together, you know? We just don't know the specifics. Uh, maybe we did at one point, but that information is long gone by now. At, at least that's what everyone in the village seems to think. We've all exchanged what we know, and that was the only logical conclusion. All right. Specifics aside, then, what kind of person was he? Young guy. In his early 20s, probably. Incredibly kind sort of person, always willing to lend a helping hand. I'd chat with him when I didn't have any customers. I even saw him stick out his neck for others on more than one occasion. <laughs> Very interesting guy, that one. Now that you've started talking about him, you don't seem nearly as down in the dumps as you did before. Seems like he left a pretty good impression on you. But of course, everyone in the village is pretty fond of him. We wouldn't have issued that commission otherwise. There aren't many young people like him nowadays, so genuine and pure. To think that he just up and disappeared one day, I just hope nothing bad happened. Well, he wasn't Could part of the main story. Moved away without telling anyone. But we kill a guy that lives here. No, he's not the type to leave without saying goodbye. Or and anyway, we could have moving him away out. without being seen by a single person in the village. There's no way he would have been able to manage that. Huh. All right, thanks for the information. We're gonna go ask around some more. Yeah, Skyward! <laughs> it's that guest I hear. Hi, Grandpa Amadea. We're here to help you look for the guy that's gone missing. Ah, so that's what brings you to these parts. Coming all this way for our sake. That's so very kind of you. With your help, I trust that young man's case is in good hands. Could you tell us a bit about him? Of course. I'm happy to help any way I can. With my failing eyesight, I'm afraid I can't offer much about his appearance. But I do remember hearing the sound of his voice. Not recently, of course. That loss has left me feeling quite empty. I don't think his parents are still living in the village. But somehow he never seemed lonely. In fact, he was usually the one offering companionship to others. He would often take time to visit the elderly, or play with the orphans in the village. And whenever someone had something on their mind, he was there to listen with open ears. He always knew just what to say. As the village chief, I owe him many thanks. Helping villagers navigate difficult moments in their lives should have been one of my responsibilities. But he was often the one rising to the occasion. Wow. He seems like such a nice and gentle person. No wonder his disappearance affected you all so much. But, um, you wouldn't happen to know any details about his name, address, or family situation, right? <sighs> 
I'm ashamed to admit it, but I just can't remember. No matter how you look at it, I should know those things. But for some reason, no matter how hard I try to remember, the information just doesn't come. Perhaps my age really has caught up with me this time. Ah, uh, it's okay. There's no need to force yourself to try and remember. We'll figure something out. Well, Traveler, what do you think? There is probably more to this case than meets the eye. A lot of things are not adding up. I don't think so, too. Like, the name thing. It's so weird that no one remembers his name. And nobody has been able to tell us anything about his family or where he lived. It's like this guy's been erased from reality or something. I want to say it's more like he's someone who only exists in people's memories. No, we know a guy that kind of was erased from reality. Wait, so you're saying it's not that he's been erased necessarily, but more like he never existed to begin with? Okay, Paimon's gonna need some time to process that one. Someone who only exists in people's memories? Could it, could it be like what happened with Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Like some sort of mass alteration of people's memories? You two are the adventurers who just arrived, right? You're here for the Vamara Village Commission? Yep, sure are. We were just looking into the case. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank goodness you haven't given up. I've been so worried the Adventurer's Guild might cancel our commission. My name is Atosa, by the way. I grew up here in Vimara Village. Anyway, I just wanted to say, please keep searching for a missing villager. I'm begging you. You have to find him. I'm sure we'll track him down. We'll certainly try our best. I'm sure we'll track him down. We usually do. Yeah, no need to worry. We'll give it our best shot. So, were you close to the missing villager? Are there any leads you can give us? Hmm. I'm not sure this counts as a lead, but follow me. There's a place I'd like to show you. That's more than anyone else gave. From where? Got him. Is this the place? Under this tree? Yep. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is very meaningful to me. It's so full of memories. We used to always sit together under this tree and talk. Sometimes we would look up at the clouds in the sky or stop to feel the wind against our skin. We could sit there for hours at a time, never realizing how long it had been. I was actually adopted by the people of Vamar Village. The forest rangers found me in the woods as a child. I was surrounded by such good people, and growing up in the village was so lively. Still, there were times when I couldn't help but feel incredibly alone. Alone? Uh, how should I put it? When something's bothering you, or when you have good news to share, you always want to talk about it with somebody. But for the longest time, I didn't know who I could talk to, or if I should say anything at all. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. Even if I might want to confide in others, I don't want to become a burden. I think I get what you mean. That's what family's for. <laughs> really? You know exactly how I feel? I used to have someone like that, a family member that I could talk to no matter what. But now I have a lot of friends who understand me and will be happy to hear me out. Aww. Wow, that sounds really nice. You're quite lucky. When it comes to our missing villager, well... 
I guess you could say that to me. He felt like both a family member I could rely on and a friend who could really understand me. No matter what came my way, I knew I could always talk to him. He was so thoughtful and pure and patient too. Whenever I talked to him, he would always seem so interested, as if the things I was describing were just as important to him as they were to me. Ever since he disappeared, there's been so much I wanted to tell him. No, no, none of those things matters now. I just really want to see him again. Wow, you two must have been really close. And you don't really know his name. Did he ever tell you anything about himself? Hmm... He mostly just talked about interesting things he saw around the village. He'd share a lot of his own wild ideas as well. Oh, right! I did ask him about his parents once. But all he said was, they're not here anymore. I didn't know whether that meant they had left the village or passed away, and I didn't want to pry. Hmm, still not much to go off of. Uh, look at me. Talking your ear off and still nothing to show for it. I'm sorry I wasn't more help. No, say that will help us understand him better. The last time I talked this much in one go was when we were still together. Huh, come to think of it, every time we talked it always seemed to be around dusk, just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Hmm. Well, time always seems to pass slower when you're relaxed, right? Uh, what's wrong, Traveler? Mm, it was always the same time day, and time never seemed to pass. Based on what we learned, this is definitely not a regular missing person's case. What Atosa just told us about time could be the key to our Evelyn this whole mystery. Hey, look at those hilly trails over there. Doesn't it seem like they're acting a little strange? Uh, the Abyss Order. Could they be the ones behind all of this? Uh-oh, we've been spotted! Quick, get ready to fight! Silence! Be sanctified! Oh. Should only be famous on my the disorder as well. They should not look too much of us alone. Thank you so much. I wasn't expecting monsters to show up. If you hadn't been here, I'm not sure what I would have done. We didn't see the huge There was no trouble! The question we should be asking now is, what is the Abyss Order doing around here? Hmm, now that I think about it, the hilly trolls around Vilmara village have been a lot more active lately. They seem agitated and would often attack anything in sight. Chief Amadea doesn't allow the children to play in the area around the village anymore. Hmm. They are now Maybe the them. Abyss Order really is involved. Well, we should head back and check out the situation in Vimara Village just in case. If the Abyss Order is plotting something, that could spell trouble for the villagers. No, don't send me back. I was. Uh... Wait a second. The person. It's. It's Dainsliff! Ah, it's you two. Oh, a friend of yours? Well, I'll leave you all to it then. I should head back to the village and check up on Chief Amadea and the others anyway. See you later! 
Yep, see you later, Atosa! Why do you always have to pop up out of nowhere like that? Is it your life's mission to jump scare us or something? It's hard to personal. Road. Or intentional, for that matter. As long as you and I are both in pursuit of the Abyss Order, we're bound to cross paths. Ah, so you're here to investigate the Abyss Order, then. That would explain the monsters you were fighting just now. Naturally. Hold on. Are you not here for the same purpose? We all saw their trail, but I'll admit we ran into them on accident. Hmm. No matter. It may have taken you a while to catch on, but I'm sure you've also realized by now that there's something strange about this place. The Abyss Order is most certainly planning something in this area. Or worse, their plan could already be in motion. So you think the Abyss Order is behind the hilly trail activity in the area? As things stand, I highly doubt that is their primary motive. I would imagine the increased hilly churl activity is merely a byproduct of whatever it is they're really trying to accomplish. Still, the hilly churl activity is causing a lot of problems for the people here. We should stick around for a while and protect the village, don't you think? The best way to protect them is by figuring out what the Abyss Order is truly planning. That is how we prevent further tragedy. Well, let's see what more we can learn from the villagers. And after that, you also own many answers. And you shall have them. I never intended to hide anything from you. Don't worry. There should be ample time to talk. You return to our village to get an intel based on what you learned. You question the villagers until eventually the sky grows dark. Ah, so that was the commission that brought you here to Vimara Village. Someone who seems to only exist in people's memories. That is indeed quite intriguing. I would agree that it's unlikely you have a simple missing persons case on your hands. However, any possible connection to the Abyss Order is still unclear. It appears all we have by way of clues is increased hilly churl activity. And that is certainly not much to go off of. Well then, how about the intel you promised me? Right! That mysterious voice he heard in his sister's memory. The one who called himself a sinner. Who is he? Hmm. I kind of remember Traveler, that, but let me this would be a nice this. time for a flashback. Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed you? I want you to have faith in her. Yeah, I mean, I was speaking, yeah. Yeah, she's bossing around the Abyss Order. They are trying to kill me. Yeah. Hmm. I sense hesitation in your words. After all, you still haven't figured out the whole truth of what happened. There's still hope for the two of you to reconcile. Irreparable damage has not yet been done. The sinner you wish to know about. His situation is different. He and his fellow sinners have long betrayed me, and long betrayed their nation. His name is Vedderfolnir, the Visionary. I'm loath to admit it, but he is also my kin, my older brother. Your brother? What happened between the two of you? What really happened in Caria back then? Those are two different questions. Will they lead to the same answer? There were five of them. The five sinners of Kanria. The wise Roptatir. The visionary Vedderfolnir. Gold mm. Rhinedaughter. The foul Sertologi. And Rehir of Solnari, Rerir. No matter how eroded my memory may become, I will never forget their names. One day, I shall have my vengeance. Wait, some of those names sound really familiar. Rhine Daughter is the one who created Albedo. Sertologi is Skirk's master. And the one we just learned about, Dane's brother, Vedafolnir. If he was the voice of the sinner, 
then the one who inspired Clotar to create the Abyss Order was him! Somehow everything's connected. If that's true, then the stone slates we found in the ruined fountain, the ones that are lying fountain's prophecy. There was likely Vedder Fournier's doing it as well. Why? why? Why does it have to be him? They were once people of great esteem in Kanria. Those who carried the hopes of the nation. They were the best of their peers, outstanding in their respective fields. The six of us, together. We should have been the ones to prevent the disaster. The ones to stop the Vinster King from continuing to rock the foundation of the world. Yet, deep within, the five of them craved something more. They could not resist the call of the Abyss, and divided among themselves a power that could destroy the world. So they became sinners, but also transcendent beings, each in possession of world-shattering power. And when the cataclysm occurred, not one of them stood up in defense of their nation. Not one came forward to prevent the tragedy. And for that, they shall never have my forgiveness. And then my sibling came into contact with your brother. Indeed. If they are not stopped, the day is sure to come when they will also betray the entire world. It must be hard to talk about all this, but thank you for telling me. Of course. As I said, I never intended to hide anything from you. So, Dane, what have you been looking into all this time? I've continued to investigate the questions surrounding the Loom of Fate. It's been quite some time since the initial operation was launched. By retrieving the eye of the first field tiller, we were able to stop part of their plan from coming to fruition. Oh, Paimon remembers! Weren't they going to use it to corrupt Osile and make a god or something? Indeed. Hmm. However, it's obvious that was just some sort of technical experiment. The eye was integral to their plan, yet somehow, despite failing to obtain it, they've skipped the experimental phase and found some other way to keep moving forward. There are many signs pointing to that effect. Then what should we do? It's not too late, is it? Our most pressing concern is to determine the purpose of the Loom of Fate. From there, we'll be able to deduce the Abyss Order's true objective. Based on the intel I've gathered so far, I suspect the Loom of Fate is related to the Ley Lines in some way. The Ley Lines? Traveler, you were able to observe your siblings' memories last time, yes? I believe that was due to the fact that the Ley Lines in that area were unstable. My recent investigation has shown that Abyss Order activity in a particular area is usually followed by a series of issues with the ley lines. And one of the things that flows through the ley lines are memories. Wait, then our commission here in Vimara Village, the person who seems to exist only in people's memories, could it be connected? Hmm, someone from the past. Memories, ley lines, loom of fate, the missing person that doesn't seem to exist. What's the connection between all this? It's certainly possible. I'll join your investigation tomorrow. This missing persons case could very well turn out to be the key to unraveling these mysteries. Well, if we're teaming up with Dane again, we're gonna need all the energy we can get. Let's try investigating somewhere a little further away tomorrow. Yesterday. It's all Dane's fault saying all that complicated stuff. I didn't sleep well either. My head's a mess. Well, let's go find Dane. We've got a lot to do today.
so. Ja. Ja. Uh, Dane? Hello, Dane? Why are you just zoning out over here? <sighs> Did something happen? Was wrong, Dane? The missing person from your commission. Could you describe them to me? Oh, a uh, young guy, no. early twenties. Seriously, Dane, what's going on? There appear to be certain memories in my mind that weren't there before. Memories of him. I uh, maybe. Maybe we just talked too much about him yesterday, and you had a weird dream or something? No. It wasn't a dream. They're... memories. Memories that suddenly appeared in my mind after I woke up. And I'm certain I've never met this person before. He has a pretty good memory for somebody who is so old and he has his mind deteriorating. Well, what exactly did you remember? I remember handing him the eye of the first field tiller. Hmm? Huh? What? Okay, so this missing person definitely has something to do with the Abyss Order then! Indeed. And it appears he possesses the ability to implant memories into the minds of others. How is that even possible? Come on, everybody had a cacho. We know it's just something messing with their Wait, minds. Then. Like all the memories the villagers have of him. Do. Could they be fake too? Maybe they never knew him at all. But why would he do something like that? Whatever the Abyss Order is planning, an important truth has been revealed to us this morning. What sort of truth? That their goal is still to obtain the Eye of the First Field Tiller. They haven't stopped searching for it. I am the only person who knows its location. Perhaps implanting that particular memory was an attempt to interfere with my mind in some way. Is that still safe? Why are the memories real? Your concerns are not entirely unfounded. I don't believe the Abyss Order is capable of altering reality like that just yet. However, considering their single-minded pursuit of the Eye, I would see an equal level of caution is in order on our part. Come with me. We must check whether the Eye is still in our possession. Oh, so you're going to take us to where you hit it? Uh, but what if someone follows us? If we go straight there and someone is on our tail, aren't we just exposing the eye's location? And that's the reason a bizarre than planning the memory in the first place. You force the danger to confirm the eye's location. Hmm. Yeah, you thought the same. Given what I know of him though, I'm sure they has already thought of that possibility. It seems like he might already have a plan. Let's go lead the way then. Of course. Uh yeah, I don't really remember but why can't we break that eye? Oh hang on, it's far. Oh, hang, hang on, uh, I want to ch check something next to the tree. Uh, uh, hang on, where was the tree? I will met her around there. And then did it come around here? Skyward! Got her! This is pretty far. I thought it was to this side of the village, but I I didn't really pay attention yeah. Got him. on the map. Uh, 
It isn't here. No, it's it's not really important. But I Skyward. I want to shut that tree again. That's for sure. Well, let's go check to see if it's safe. Traveler, wait. Yeah, he should actually take us to a wrong place and then see, and then leave the place, see if we're followed. <sighs> We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. Mm, what was they going to tell me just now? Hey, wait up! Of revelations. Then brings you to where he hit the eye before. As you continue onward, the answers will soon be revealed, but when you step within, there seems to be something strange going on with them. Then. the mechanisms here have changed over time. Hmm. You can access the upper floor through the side door. Perhaps you should try reactivating the mechanism over there. <laughs> so you left in a place they weren't completely familiar with. Come on.
Hmm. Nothing more here. Make sure all the runes are pointing in the direction indicated by the light. That should unlock the mechanism. Huh. Ah, the door's open. Let's go. Our destination is just up ahead. Isn't this kind of like the place where the statue was upside down? Or no? That was more like a cave. Looks like we can't go any further. Be on your guard. I sense the presence of the abyss. Oh. It's the abyss what are you guys? They're here. Desolation. So this is about your section for guards of newborn babies. Feel no more. There's a cold down already. This is where Order guide you. Okay, I think that should be kind of fit in it. Silence! Long never more! Strike clouds converge! Desolation! Solidify! Overruled! Just as I suspected. The false memories were a trap. The Abyss Order just wanted to follow us here. Why do you sound distressed? Now that they're in the vicinity, we should have a chance to see... Dane? What's wrong? Can you feel that? There's been a disturbance in the ley lines. It must be the work of the Abyss. Wow, you must be really sensitive to that sort of thing. Byman doesn't feel it. Yeah, usually the you two, do everything. as I say. Use that mechanism over there and leave this place. And leave it here on your own? Will it be alright? The Abyss Order is putting something in motion. If you return to Vimara Village, I suspect you might finally have the opportunity to locate the missing villager. Just think of it as a way to divide and conquer. Don't really like that, alright? It's not like we don't have friends in some areas that we could have told about things and then does have a point. They have them keep guard over there. But something still feels off. What am I missing? We don't usually see what's happening elsewhere, do we? That we don't know anything about. Let's 
this. <laughs> I knew going along with your trap would be the only way to meet with you face to face. We can get a nicer sword for our cutscenes. You risked your safety and that of the eye. Oh, that that's good. quite the gamble, Dainsliff. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap laid by the Twilight Sword. So you came here all on your own? What about those followers of yours? When the Twilight Sword is prepared for battle, any army I could send would only be marching to their doom. Better that I face you alone. I know you must have a lot to say, but if it's a conversation you want, you'll have to defeat me first. I can't open the map? Why is the icon not blocked then? Oh. Hey, look at those hilly trails over there! They seem strangely calm. Weren't they acting super agitated just a little while ago? Why are they so calm all of a sudden? Wait, I hear something. In the new world, they bade farewell to the shrouded sun. At last, they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering, or try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy. Such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. Uh, did you hear that? What was that sound just now? You heard it too, Paimo. It was someone's voice. It sounded so gentle. Could that voice be... comforting the hilly trails in some way? Oh, this is weird. Let's check if this is happening anywhere else. Um... Uh, can we interact with them? We could. Um... I'll feel bad for it, but I need to test. Gather. Okay, we're cool. Looks like the same thing is happening over here too. The hilly trails are calm. You see, we're both still here. We've reclaimed an endless amount of time to love. Release your tears. You no longer need to hold back your sorrow. Is that voice again? Over there! It looks like they're sleeping! In the end, he whispered softly. Sleep well, father. Sleep well, my beloved people. When you awake, that which differentiates us shall be no more. It almost sounds like a poem or some kind of story. Well, now that the hilly trolls have calmed down, Vimara Village should be safe at least. Let's put the situation to the side for now. Dane said this might be our chance to find the missing villager. So we should head back to Vimara Village before it's too late! Skyward! Scatter! Uh. 
Skyward. Okay, so three more. Grandpa Amadea, is everyone all right? The Abyss Order seems to be up to something nearby. The Abyss Order? This is the first I'm hearing of it. Thank you for your concern, but as far as I'm aware, it's been business as usual here in the village. Well, that's good to hear. Oh, also, you didn't happen to come across any clues about the missing villager while we were gone, did you? Hmm? Someone's gone missing, you say? Who would that be? Huh? Okay, they forgot their memories. The current plaintiffs, but did they also forget their interactions with us and the other travelers, adventurers? You don't remember? Things just got even more complicated. Well, you know, the young guy from Vimara Village, the one you've been looking for all this time. You posted a commission with the Sumeru Adventurers Guild. That's kind of the whole reason we're here, actually. Your missing persons commission. Ah, I do apologize, you two. I hope I'm not worrying you too much. I'm sure it's just my age making me forgetful again. At least right now, I can't seem to recall whatever it is you're referring to. Perhaps you should try asking someone else. But how is that? Uh, all right. Thanks for your help, Grandpa Amadea. Something's definitely not right. We just talked to Grandpa Amadea about the missing villager. There's no way he could have forgotten all about him just like that. We don't know this guy what very well. What do you think, Traveler? He could Can have everyone's no memories of the missing way. villager have been erased again? It's early to say we should check with the others first. You're right. We should narrow down the possibilities first. Let's go ask someone else then. You're gonna waste time with that guy again. Instead of talking to the girl that knew him, seemed to know him better. No, she already had her. Someone's gone missing? Who? Uh. Just as expected. Mm -hmm. Um, that guy you said a bunch of nice things about earlier? The one you always used to chat with? He's around 20 years old, and you said he was a kind, warm-hearted person? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Really? You remember? There aren't many young people who've earned that kind of praise from me. If you're certain that's what I said... Then there's only one person who fits the bill. No doubt about it. But why'd you say he's gone missing? Have you seen him recently? Do you know where he went? Yeah, I just saw him leave the village. There was someone else with him, too. They couldn't have gone far. They went to the tree. Strange. Bayram seems to remember him. And apparently he just saw him? Do you think maybe it's not that there's something wrong with people's memories, but that we've somehow returned to a time before he went missing? And the return to the past would be that simple. Yeah. Given everything they mentioned about the service of the ley lines, I'd say it's former like is related to uh and you think carefully what's really going on. Can we just go after where he is supposed to be? Uh, people have forgotten about the missing person. Just like what happened with Greater Lord Ruka Devada, no one remembers him. Because there's been a change in people's memories. Yeah, but she was like completely erased from records and stuff. And rewritten when there were... She made changes. Now people remember there was something. Return to point before this impressive place. If we really did travel back to a time before he disappeared, 
That could explain why the villagers said he hadn't gone missing. We're presently traversing someone's memories. No, I don't think so. We're interacting with people. If this person only exists in people's memories, maybe we're in someone's memory right now. But then can we interact with things that the people didn't interact with? This seems more likely. No, Baram still remembers him. He just forgot about the fact that this person went missing. Okay, I think it's a new hypothesis. Though. Time travel is extremely difficult to perform. The current situation probably has something to do with the disturbances in the ley lines. So it is possible. Time travel is extremely difficult to perform, but it is possible then. We haven't really traveled time, back in time. We try to rewrite the past, the history, the memory saved the world. But we didn't travel back. Did we ever travel back? Oh no, those places that are the mansion fountain, maybe in the past. May maybe they are like recordings or memories. Maybe they're in the past. I'm not sure. Right! Paimon totally forgot about the Leyline disturbances. We're in someone else's memory. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird with the interactions we have. Just people. like how you entered your sibling's memory last time. Yeah, but that time we didn't really interact with things that, that she did. That would also didn't. explain why we seem to be at a time before he went missing. It's a memory after all. If we really are in someone's memory, then it's our chance to find him. Right. If he's someone who only exists in people's memories, then we're finally on the same turf. But. Didn't Baron just say that he saw him leave the village with someone? Where should we go look for him? Who knows how long this ley line disturbance is gonna last? We might not have that much time and we don't even know whose memory this is! Let's go through what we know so far. Good idea! Where's all his time and go to where he is? We pretty much figured out that the missing villager has the ability to... Implant memories in other people's minds. In the minds of others. We don't really know if he is the one responsible for that. We just know that they're implanting memories of him. Right. It's not necessarily yeah. him. Can we try to figure out more about him using what we know of his ability? Like, does it maybe leave a trace that would somehow give him away? Implanting memories into the minds of the others must be an imperfect process. There's no way the new memories could perfectly blend in with the old ones. There has to be some kind of tell. No, it can be something like, like sometime last month we met each other. I don't rem you can remember everything you did. Scenes from false memory will not change. All the memories seem to be set in or near Vimara village, but I'm still not sure if they're restricted to this location. Time does not pass within the memory. False memories. If time was allowed to pass within the false memories, there's a higher chance they might conflict with someone's original recollection. That would make it much harder to avoid suspicion. False memories are easily forgotten. There's a difference between memories that arise from lived experiences and those that are implanted into the mind. Perhaps it has something to do with time. Maybe not. We don't have any way to prove whether certain memories were simply forgotten or never existed in the first place. No. Based on what we know so far, there isn't any evidence to support that conclusion. Mm. Yeah, and the previous options he gave a bit more detailed. Negative. No wonder! All this time and the sky hasn't changed a that must mean time isn't passing. That's the tell of the fake memories. The implanted memories are basically taking place outside of the regular 24 hours of the day. If the memories included the regular passage of time, it would be easy for people to tell that something was off. 
like there could be overlap or something. People might start to wonder why they remember doing two different things at the same time of day. That's why he makes sure the memories take place at a specific moment in time rather than over a period of time. That yeah, doesn't really make sense. If we consider this conjunction with what we already know, then the question of whose memory this is, since you have an obvious answer. Atosa. Thanks, Leaf. The color of the sky coincides with the moment in time she described. Yeah. Thanks, Leaf. Dainsliff had memories implanted into his mind. Could it be that it's happened more than once? We thought Chief Amadea forgot about the missing villager, but it turns out we're at a moment in time before the village issued the commission. No, that doesn't seem right. I need to think about this some more. No, that doesn't seem... The, the Galazer with the, the negatives. Oh, right! That's exactly... And she's the one we should have looked for in the first place because oh, she's the one that helped the most. Every time we talked, it always seemed to be around dusk, just like right now. Yeah, we don't need a flashback for five minutes Time ago. Always passed by really we need it for less ear. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Yep, that has to be it. This is definitely Atosa's memory. Uh, let's go to the tree. Yeah, that's where they'll be. Mm hmm. Ah, okay, I was on the wrong margin of the region yeah. when I was looking Skyward. for the tree. So, you see, Granny Jahiet was a mercenary when she was younger. She just talks like that out of habit. She's not trying to scare the children on purpose. <laughs> oh, there I go again. Always talking about my own things. Do you, maybe, have anything you want to share? Um, it's okay if you don't. You, you could also just talk about what you think of me? Oh, I, uh, I... I think you're an incredibly strong and thoughtful young woman. You'll meet many amazing people and live a very happy life. You won't miss someone like me. Huh? Mm, the eyes. Are those your friends over there? Is he the sinner? Finally found him. But why does she look kind of familiar? Oh, right! This version of Atosa hasn't met us yet! Friends? I guess you could say that. It must have taken them a lot of effort to find me. Hmm. So... I should see what they need. I'm sorry, Atosa. We'll have to continue this conversation another time. Another time, huh? Um... Yeah. Okay, I'll head back to the village then. Talk to you some other time. We are inside her memory. Won't this be weird for? Oh, it's nice to see you, traveler. I She's... believe this is the first time we've met. You are. You believe this first time? How are you not sure? You are. Factory in the memories, the absorber, the little fate, and everything else. I need to think of one person that can connect all this together. We could ask him. We don't need to to brain gymnasts. If the guy's right there, we could ask him. The founder of the Abyss Order, the man who broke the curse of immortality. Carry back. Born into abject sorrow, 
he shall now become the loom of fate. Yeah, I didn't really remember that. Yeah. The visioner probably. Yeah, but it's weird that Dainsleaf said he remembered the the villager and stuff. He he could have told us it was Dane's wrong, brother, so. one of the five sinners of Conria. The one who stole the power of the abyss. Yeah, I think it's him. But let's check the others first. Your Kari oh, no, Alberic. It's him. Oh. I thought he has star eyes like they, so I thought it was him. Oh. You know me? That's quite a surprise. I don't believe I've met you before. Oh, I see. It was the memory, wasn't it? Your sibling's memory. You saw... The me from back then. This is Atosa's memory. I came here to say goodbye to her. But... I suppose I'll just leave her a message instead. Come. Let's find somewhere else to talk. I'm sure this can be translated, but this isn't really helpful during gameplay like that. Um, but then he returned. No, he left the Hilichur body and now traversed the ley lines as a memory. For her existence. Place. I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. I'm someone who no longer exists in the real world after all. As you well know. You look quite exhausted. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this. And now, the time has finally arrived. This is a rare opportunity for me as well. I should try to learn as much information from Carabin as I can. What exactly happened to you? Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But Despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the Loom of Fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the Loom of Fate. A bird's dead, that's why he no longer exists outside of people's memories. As for your question, the Loom of Fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. Weaving ley lines? In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But, as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories. 
but it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. So that was the source of your ability to play memories. And with that we can break Celestia. Yes. I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. After all, its existence cost me my life. So, the memories that suddenly appear in Dane's mind were implanted by Skarber through the half-finished Loom of Fate. But... So, is Skarber actually evil because the memories led us to a trap by the abyss? That makes sense, but I'm still lost as to why he went so far to introduce himself to all the residents of Yumara village. Why do you plant your memories of yourself in the people of Mara village? Ah, uh, that. I was wrong to implant those memories. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. But why? I just... wanted them to feel like I once existed in this world. As if... I had a chance at life. That's why. I'll never have a guest. But is there any kind of meaning to this? But why the memory being played on Dane? Does only existing people's memory really count as living? <laughs> I know what you must be thinking. Why would I do something so meaningless? I didn't remember Carbet had that thing wrapped around but his I just, chains. I just couldn't accept it. Uh, I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life. What kind of person I would be. What other people would think of me. Chief Amadea, Aram, Granny Jahiet, Atosa. Could I have spoken to her? What would it be like if I could live alongside them? No cataclysm, no curse. Just a quiet life in a peaceful village. I was curious, so I selfishly tried to have my own life. Even if... Even if that meant piecing together the version of myself that could have been... One memory at a time. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> After all, my life ended a long time ago. Any chance at living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old. My consciousness left to mature in an illusory world of nothingness. Even the form you see before you was nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. In the end, this all stems from the tragedy that occurred in Carrion back then. You no, know, everyone's looking for you. I know. But there's nothing I can do to make them find me. If I could exist in the real world, I would return without a second thought and surprise them with the suddenness of it all. But... Well... That's not possible for me. As I understand it. Even though you only appear in their memories, your existence was a great comfort to them. Uh, they all believe you once lived among them. I know. Well, now that I found you, let's continue this conversation some other time. They might still need my help. Uh, I thought his strength was... Captain Dainsliff? Mm. Twilight Sword, you mean? Mm. Uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on his end. Settled? Exactly. As someone who could only exist in people's memories, the fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this can only mean one thing. The Loom of Fate has already been completed. 
Oh. Uh, yeah, there is not. Why would be nice to have flashbacks from a year ago? Because I thought the Lumos fate was already completed. Now he said it wasn't, and now he said he, he has. Because I thought he was a Luma fate and was done. The Luma fate is already complete. That means the eye of the first few tiller must have fallen in the hands of the abyss. Could something have happened today? No need to worry about Captain Dainsleff. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he was planning. Captain Dainsleff has had the eye inside his body this whole time, hasn't he? His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the eye in order to have the chance to confront the princess. He would then hand the eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. That way, Captain Dainsleff could accomplish his own goal and ensure the safety of the eye all at once. A very thorough plan. But they never handed me the eye. That's right. Because in his mind, he had given it to you already. And does that mean that he gave you a false memory? You made him think that? When? Before you two entered that false location. Traveler, wait. Couldn't he sense, maybe? The hmm? eye inside of him. Still. Uh, we've no time to lose. Let's head inside. So when they froze up back then, it was because false memories being planted in his mind. No wonder. That was when I implanted the memory of him handing you the eye. Given the tense situation at that time, Captain Dainsleff failed to notice anything out of the ordinary and took that memory to be real. I'm sorry, Traveler, but I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. And to do that, we had to retrieve the eye. So they had the eye this whole time until the Abyss Order took it away. I'm not sure there's anything we could have done. Now that the Luma Fate is complete, what are you planning on doing with it? I promise I'm not trying to conceal anything from you, but I truly have no idea what the princess is planning. So why are you helping her? Tavat's ley line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new ley lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist. In the face of everything they could be planning, I fear I'm too insignificant to even get a glimpse of the bigger picture. In any case, I had my own use for the Loom of Fate, and my goal, at least, has been achieved. So, they can, what's the point of creating new, new ley lines if you can't replace the ones that already exist? You remember my the father, goal? don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my hilly churl form, I suffered from an indescribable level of mental anguish. To comfort me, my father told me a story uh, I didn't remember that this face. was a fairy tale world where I had to take on the form of a little monster. That story managed to dispel my fears, even if just for a moment. My goal was simple, to use the Loom of Fate in its near-completed form, when its ability to create memories was at its strongest, to implant a specific memory into the minds of the Hilla Churls. In that memory, I would tell them a story, just like my father did for me. It was a story of fairy tales and love. But, more than anything, it was the story of us. And, and tomorrow I'll be back to slaying Hugo Churros. So, the thing that caused the Hugo Churros to come down back then was Carbet's stories. story. So that was his goal. That was the only thing he wanted. 
He had a device as powerful as the Luma Fate at his disposal, and all he wanted to do was to offer the Hilly a moment of comfort and peace. I can't change the world. Not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Implanting those memories, that was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. Perhaps. I think it was very meaningful indeed. All that's left of my existence is a wisp of residual consciousness tied to the loom of fate. In truth, that trace of my consciousness should have dissipated long ago. My goal was the one thing that allowed me to hold on all this time. Oh. But now, the bedtime story mm. is finished. And it's finally time to rest. Looks like I was too late to see Kari Bear one last time. Kari <laughs> <laughs> Bear's consciousness is gone. And this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. <sighs> Were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Well, how about a conversation? Oh. Okay, I thought that was going to be the end of the cutscene. The chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, no, we always stopping by talking to everybody. She that doesn't. Yeah, it's almost... I almost can't believe it's real. That battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even after 500 years. Does he also not age and doesn't really care about that? Or is it unusual for her to not age? What exactly are you planning? What are you doing with the Loom of Fate? The Loom of Fate, huh? I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time before the Heavenly Principles awaken. The Heavenly Principles are still asleep? Yes, for 500 years now, ever since the Cataclysm in Conria. There's been no sign of activity. Mm. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne. Yes? Such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principles situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. 500 years ago is when we arrived here then. Did we create it? The cataclysm by accident. You really hate the heavenly principles, don't you? Don't we as well? That's the thing that separated us. You could say that. Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. 
The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world, even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the Heavenly Principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. <sighs> Ether? Hmm. You're the only one in this world who calls me that. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much I wanted to ask you, but for some reason... I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? Hmm. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me. Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Ether. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes, let alone my own brother. <sighs> huh? What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, aside from our inability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. With Kari Bear gone, we won't be able to remember anything that happened here. <laughs> Everything in this space will be wiped from existence, including all memory of our reunion. You're only telling me this now? Well. But he could remember things about our race from the world. So maybe they could be the exception to this. But would he remember things from before Karin Bear finished? Still so sleepy. Paimon's head feels all fuzzy. Oh, Paimon woke up a little earlier than you, so Paimon will fill you in. The villagers said that they saw us sleeping near the village yesterday. They couldn't wake us up no matter how hard they tried, so they decided to just bring us back here. Hmm. Oh, and Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. He didn't say anything, though. Just made sure that you were all right and left. Kind of seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but that's dang for ya. There are changes, does he? I'm having trouble thinking straight right now. But do you even know about the commission? Hmm. Let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Kari Bear. Okay. He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that, uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. Okay, so you remember that. Carbert and I talked for a while, he told me about the Luma Fate. Wait, really? What a score! I guess her commission is complete then. The missing villager, the person who only existed in people's memories, was Carbert alone. But now that he's gone, I'm not sure how to explain things to the villagers. What happened after that? 
After that, I can't seem to remember. I'm just tired. I feel like something else happened, but I, why can't I remember? I'm not sure why, but I almost, it almost feels like I lost something. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Sleep well. Bayram, you sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. Wasn't anything good or bad, I'd say. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party yesterday. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. So there we were, you searching part. away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk he was passing by this one tree outside the village, and he saw our missing villager. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and they all left together. They looked like quite a happy family, apparently. And after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of strange that we forgot all about it for so long. So that's how Carbe said his goodbyes. That was the last memory he gave them. Oh, and we also remembered his name, Curry Bear. Hmm. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. Uh, that is a unique name. <laughs> Make sure you remember this time. Well, I hope he's happy wherever he is. And we're all relieved now that we know what happened. Seems like everyone thinks Kari Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. Kari Bear is gone. The loom of fate is now complete. And no one else will try to change the village's memories. How Atos is doing. Maybe we should go check on her. If she hasn't remembered like everyone else, we can tell her what happened. Hyman didn't see her in the village just now, so she's probably at the tree. Come on, let's go talk to her. Mm. Okay, so no. Then I doubt the old man will say so. Oh no, it's up here. Uh, oh, hang on, where did I talk to the old man before? about to go looking for you. I wanted to thank you. I was part of the search party, so I... Oh. remember what happened to Kari Bear now. Honestly, I just... can't believe I forgot something so important. Maybe he wanted you to forget him. I'm sure he wouldn't want you to forget him. Uh, why is there... He always first, seemed to first, appear out of nowhere and now... Question. He left just as quickly. If Kari Bear wants me to forget about the time we spent together, then I'm willing to try. I relied on him for a lot of things, but I'm sure with enough time, even the deepest of attachments can fade. <sighs> okay, I'll admit. I'm just putting on a brave face. I was dumped, wasn't I? Otherwise, why would he just leave like that without saying goodbye? I'm sure he had his reasons. <laughs> you don't need to comfort me. I'll be okay. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that make life more precious. And you know, if he has a heart, Maybe he'll come back and see me one day. 
Anyway, thanks for all your hard work, you two. I promised I'd help Granny Jahiet with something, so I should head back. Goodbye! Well, that should be it, right? Everyone's lives can go back to normal now. Oh, right! Weren't you about to tell Paimon what happened after your conversation with Kari Bear? You said he didn't remember. Well, what is it that happened? I can remember. It feels like there's something in my pocket. Uh, a picture? Where'd that come from? Let Paimon see! Oh. You must get along with each other, the two of you. Uh, uh how? Do he took a picture and brought it to the real world? No, they should question it. They sh how did he brought a picture to the real world? A precious group photo that has surpassed the rules somehow. Uh, being taken by some unknown person using unknown means in a space that should no longer exist. This will never be explained, will it? Okay, what I want to see coming back here is... Yeah, I noticed a little blue thing up here. But then I started fighting the abbeys and they, the cutscene took me away. That's cute. Yeah, but this is probably something that she sculpted in the real world afterwards. Okay, that, that was cute. Mm, the quest done. Dangerous beyond. Okay, that's the versus quest that I got complete, and then the event that we got time to do. Alright then, now let's see, mm, I don't have any. Okay, let's try to get a current for us. Nope. Um, but um, yeah, I guess it's been quite a bunch if I... If the time is ending and I don't have her yet. But alright. Then I should be off.